Huh? Are you on? I am on. I think so. I don't think I have anybody here yet, but. How's everybody doing tonight? Welcome uh, to Questions and Answers Live. Me going live on YouTube tonight. Uh, I got a bunch of questions sent in on social media today uh, through Facebook and Instagram, and I was going to go through and just start answering some of those until we got everybody on here. Uh, man, what a beautiful day in Oklahoma. I don't know where you guys are at today, but man, it was like perfect, perfect today here in Oklahoma. Little update on uh, pecans. I'm starting harvesting Monday. Little update on the lake. Um, I got an email from the Corps of Engineers. Let me just read that to you. She's making an actual jurisdictional determination. I don't know what that is, but the wheels are still turning. So we're getting somewhere on the lake. So that's haven't got it approved yet, but at least we're still working on it. So I was just going to start knocking out my nose running. I was going to start knocking out some of these uh, questions from I've caught bigger. I love his uh, deal that he's got here on social media. How did you become a pro? Uh, I think you become a pro by paying a bigger entry fee than anybody else is how I think you become a pro, you know, early in my career. Uh, you know, it's just too hard headed to quit. I, I fished the opens and then made it to the top 150 and, uh, didn't have a lot of people that it, that I needed to support, so it just I was able to make ends meet in between everything. But I appreciate you asking that through a lot of hard work. That's really the best way to answer it. Um, I had another question: Did I have I ever fished Robert S. Kerr Reservoir? That's that's the uh, pool there on the Arkansas River. That yes, I have. Um, what an awesome place! I love that place. I wish I, li I lived a little bit closer. Uh, Jeremy Weller, recommendations for three to four Bass Pro rods for kayak fishing. Um, thanks for the question, Jeremy. I guess you realize I just got into kayak bass fishing. And uh, I would say, like, you know, I don't need my big flipping stick so much, I, I don't think. I, you know, seven-foot heavy action carbon light or, or platinum rods would be, you know, what I – seven-one platinum or seven-foot heavy, seven-foot medium heavy carbon light. Those would be the rods I would use, you know, for my frog spinnerbait. Uh, and I'd probably even use those for flipping. I think it'd probably be a little easier rod to use uh, flipping-wise. So that's kind of what I would use. But great question. I appreciate it a bunch. This, this question I liked a lot. Ledford Dawson, tournament on Texoma this weekend. Where should I start and what should I use? Uh, that's got to be like the Little Dixie Bass Club tournament. I remember fishing that all the time. Um Man, I'd have me like a power worm tied on. I'd have a top water tied on. I'd have a square bill tied on. Um, shallow brush is going to be a real big key, you know, big factor. Um, probably some deeper brush too. You know, I don't know what the lake level is. I should have looked that up for you. But, uh, man, I'd, I'd be throwing a top water on some shallow rocky points and sand drops for some smallmouth, largemouth in the morning. And then I'd, I'd run as many brush piles or shallow pieces of wood that I could run the rest of the day is what I would do. Um, all right, moving on to some more questions. What's your biggest bag of five fish and what did you catch them on? That was from Drew Lee. I've had a, uh, I've had two or three 29 pound bags. Um, one at Amstead, one at Santee Cooper, one at Falcon. Uh, the, the one I'm proudest of is probably that one at Amstead. I caught all those fish sight fishing, which was super cool. I caught a 10 pounder that was just cruising and I caught it on a, a, a weightless worm and just threw it out in front of her and she ate it. It was, it was a cool, cool bite, but, um, that was one I was most proud. Of. What is your most memorable tournament? This is from Chimbri six. Uh, I might've said that wrong. Wow. It would probably have to be an open event in may of 2000 on the red river in shreveport um i finished fifth in the tournament but it qualified me for the classic which man i was just so excited and to make the top 150 the next year that was a big turning point you know for me to to make it to the next level um i like this question easy peasy sent us in why do pros switch hands with only their bait casters uh because we all learn you know we all grew up
you know, casting with your right hand, put it in your left hand and start reeling it. And just, it's like, right. Once you got into that habit, that's what you, you know, it's hard to break. And and that's the reason for me, I, I got left-handed reels. I've been through stretches where my arms hurt really bad and I couldn't set the hook right-handed. So I'd always have to set the hook left-handed and reel left-handed or with the left-handed reel. Um, so I can do either. I prefer, I'm, I'm more accurate, uh, flipping with my right hand. Um, I can flip with my left hand. I just don't feel like I'm as efficient. I had to think about it a little bit more, a little bit more hesitation there. So I just, I go with what's natural, but yeah, I just think that's how everybody was raised. Uh, Scott Edwards, who makes your uh, rod butt cushions and where can they be purchased? Uh, thanks for all you do. Thanks for the question, Scott. Those are Luna to see cushions is what they're called. Um, I know Bass Pro Shops has them. I've seen them at all Bass Pros. They're just, they're really cool because they cushion your ribs and you're setting the hook and they float your rods. So a uh, big deal for me now in these kayaks that I got to have those on there. Uh, Angela Wadley Rines, what would be the best rod and lure for the beginning female that's trying to keep up with her husband and nephew? Um, best rod and reel. Man, I, I, Angela, I, you need, if you're using a uh, spinning right reel, you need to go over and, and make sure you're using a bait casting reel. Um, just you can control. I just, you can control things better. You can be more accurate. You can slow that bait down as it's entering the water. You can flip it, you know, and slow it down as it's entering the water. So the biggest thing I would say is just, you know, get you an, an affordable reel these days, you know, 70 to $120 reel is an affordable reel that will work for you. Uh, a seven foot rod, you know, heavy action would be perfect for what you need to do. A uh, medium heavy, if you're throwing a spinnerbait or a, a vibrating jig, and uh, just become efficient with it. That's how you can keep up with those guys. All right. I feel like I got a lot of questions building up over here on YouTube and I'm by myself tonight. Uh, I'm going to answer a few more here uh, from social media and then we'll get over here. Brad Drummond, what are your thoughts on land developers changing the bank layouts of lakes around Oklahoma? Uh, man, Brad, I don't think they can. I feel like the core owns, um, uh, you know, the land all, you know, like as much as they can flood it. So um, I know, I know, you know, we've probably lost a lot of willow trees over on Grand. Uh, and I guess maybe some of those lakes, you know, thinking back across the country, they build retaining walls. So they are changing it. Um, you know, I don't know. I, I see a catch 22 there. we got more and more people on our lakes. So if we didn't have those retaining walls and we're going to have more erosion, the lake's going to, you know, you're going to lose all that shoreline. The lake's going to become muddy. So, you know, maybe looking at it from a positive, adding in that riprap or those retaining walls is going to protect the longevity of those lakes a little bit better. But all right, guys, I'm going to try to answer a few of these over here. Um, and are coming in fast. Uh, I can't, I can't read that fast. Um, all right, here's one. Jody White, what do you do when you have so much shad in there you can't catch a bass? What lure should you use? Uh, Jody, that's a great question. That's the time of year that we're at here in Oklahoma. Um, you know, like I had a great experience the other day with Alex Rudd, and he brought up something that he likes to do um, was with a jerkbait. You know, he brought that jerkbait down in a school of shad. The whole school of shad flutters away, yet then there's that one shad, the jerkbait in the middle, and that bass would hit it. And it just made a lot of sense. You know, the same thing that I've always tried to do is, is maybe use a bigger lure or a smaller lure than all the shad that's in the water when you have that much shad. Um, and you just got to make it react. You got to, you know, it's always talk about like in the channel, reeling a bait faster, you know, just you're making those fish react. So those are some of the things that I try to do. You still have to use a shad colored lure because uh, that's what they're feeding on. A lot of times um, keep it up in the water column, but uh, maybe try a jerk bait. That'd be a good a good thing. All right. Um, let's see. Any tips from Northern Wisconsin? You should do a video up here, man. I should. Who was that? Soren Dumar. Uh, Northern Wisconsin. You know, like I, I feel like Winnebago uh, is probably about as far north as I've been. There's a few other lakes up there I've been. Um, oh, well, the Mississippi River. That's that's way up in Wisconsin. Yeah, not really. It's south west wisconsin but i love wisconsin you guys have got it made i fished that big green lake that's a cool lake i, I did a i did a bass pro video there in the fall caught them on a the top water and then i moved out on the outside grass and caught them really deep out there uh, i'm not really answering your question so i should do some videos up there to fish them some more i did a bunch of videos last year up in minnesota in the fall so maybe check some of those out um 
caught smallmouth and largemouth off docks, off undercut banks, uh, out off grass lines too. So uh, neat, neat area to live though, Scott. Jason Hawk, have you ever fished Virginia water in the fall? I haven't, so I'm sorry. Uh, but a bass is a bass, so don't, you know, just because it's Virginia, I feel like, you know, it's all the same bass all the way across the water. Edwin, what's your largest topwater fish ever caught, and was it on your bait, and what was your bait of choice? Great question, uh, Mr. Bray. Um, the most memorable one was in a classic one time. Uh, I caught an eight-pounder, eight. It's still like one of the top five biggest bass ever caught in a classic. It was down in Florida um on a frog it was like a eight nine eight ten or something it was a really big one i caught a uh, another eight pounder at rayburn in the fall um on a popper uh, all over grass so it was a really cool bite um but those i think are my two biggest two eight pounders i don't think i've ever caught a nine pounder so yeah pretty cool man i appreciate all the questions guys you guys are um on fire tonight uh, how do you stop a spinning reel from twisting your line? Adam Desmore. Um, great question. How do you spot, stop a spinning reel from twisting your line? Man, you don't. It just, it's just, it's, 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 it's what happens. So um, the thing that I do, I put it all on. We can all argue how to put it on. Some people say lay the spool and flip the spool and do it vertical. I don't care how you put it on. Once you put it on your spinning reel, take it all the way back off. Have your kid tie it to your dog throw a stick, take that spinning line off, like, you know, twice as far as you're ever going to cast. Then just pinch it between your, your fingers, like out at the end of your pole and pinch it again and put the rod between, you know, just pinch it to where all those twists come out, reel it in. Um, it will get rid of it immediately. If you're out on the water, it's even easier. If it's all twisted up on you, open your bail, let a lot of line off, you know, put your boat in drive and just let it peel behind the boat, you know, in your wake. And then again, pinch it when you reel it on and it'll go on there without any twist. That's the easiest, fastest way to do it, and uh, it won't give you any trouble. Um, Gavin Highsmith, what are some good baits for late September smallmouth in Minnesota? Gavin, man, Gavin is a cool kid. He's actually from here in Oklahoma, and I got to go fishing with him one time, and we had a lot of fun. Um, Gavin, uh, smallmouth Minnesota. Um, I would have to say you're going to throw a spinnerbait up there quite a bit, burning a spinnerbait, a jerk bait. Um, you know, you always have a drop shot tied on, a Ned rig tied on anytime you're dealing with smallmouth. Um, you know, going where I would assume you guys are going for smallmouth. Um, you know, I, I would think, a, I think a, a topwater bait, a walking bait is going to be really good. You know, burning a crankbait is going to be good. A square bill, you know, up shallow, those fish are going to be feeding. So I would be like throwing baits as fast as I can, you know, spinner bait, crankbait. Uh, maybe a top water a little bit until you find them and then slow down. And maybe like if you find a bunch of fish, turn around, then you can use some slower baits. But the biggest thing you need to do, Gavin, when you go up there is just cover a lot of water until you find them. And they should be shallow, like real shallow, like, you know, three to seven feet of water, I'd say. Why do I not see any pros using trailer hooks on a buzz bait? David Cook, man, I have a trailer hook on every one of my buzz baits. So I don't know. Uh, I haven't seen that. So maybe that is. Okay. Uh, this is a great question. Uh, Smith fishing. I can't say your first name. Zidon Smith fishing. Um, 14 year old. Uh, how do I get into tournament fishing? Great question. Um, I, I had a, a social media question about that too. Just somebody wanting to get into tournament fishing. If you don't have a boat, man, the best, most awesome thing to do is find a good active club in your area and go in that thing as a non-boater, you know, I mean, just, you can learn so much. You don't have to have a bass boat, um, join a bass club, join, be a co-angler in, in whatever series you can be a co-angler in, you know, the BFLs or whatever, and just learn off as many different people as you can and uh, do that for one, two, three, four, five years, however much you can do it. But there's no quicker way to the top to learning a lot about bass fishing than fishing out of the back of somebody else's boat, uh, as many times as you can, different people all across the country. That's what I would recommend. Um, Edwin, Paul B. Edwin, when will your pecans be ready? Paul, if you want to volunteer, I'm going to be out there Monday morning picking them up. I think they're ready. Um, well, they're not completely opened. I think I feel like I'm going to get 60 to 70% of them out of the trees. 
Uh, we'll have to go back through and shake them all again. So if I get a bunch of them out Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, get them all cleaned, maybe the following Monday, following Wednesday, I'm going to say two weeks from Monday. I'll have them up on the website, fresh pecans, and they'll be ready for you guys. I appreciate you asking. I'm pretty proud of them. They're good. I like, I've been eating on them, like going through the orchard every morning, checking on them. They're, they're good. They're really good. Josie Wales. I love that name. Have you done, how have you done fish with a pro sweepstakes yet? Man, I wish I could have one that. Uh, I do quite a bit of that. You guys just have to stay on track of my uh, social media and uh, that'd be great. Um, sorry guys. I just had to read these real quick. Um, uh, Fishing Okeechobee, Kissimmee Chain in this weekend, late October. What do you have tied on? Wow. Man, that's a tough time of the year, I feel like, down there. I fished it one time in December. Um, you know, I, I don't think you can go wrong throwing a vibrating jig, a spinner bait, um, and a square bill crank bait. I think back to an open that I had on Kissimmee. It was one on a square bill. Uh, there was a lot of fish caught casting a worm. You know, you always cast a worm, so... If we had to choose five baits, let's just choose them. A square bill, spinner bait, your favorite top water, whatever it may be, a vibrating jig, and a June bug straight tail worm. That, that would be the five baits that I would have tied on if I was fishing those lakes late October. How is the lake progress coming? Citified redneck. It's uh it's slow. I don't know what to say. I sent emails over the last two weeks to the Corps of Engineers. Um they give me abbreviations that they're trying to do, and I don't know what the abbreviations mean. Um, I don't know. I, I wish I had an answer. I, I I am so ready to get that thing started. I look out there every day wishing it was there. Um, every day goes by as a day those bass aren't growing. And uh, like I said, we're going to give an awesome trip away to one of you guys that follow me on my YouTube channel once those fish get big enough. And uh, I'm going to share it with you guys. It's going to be a fun lake once it gets done. So I promise you, I'm trying uh what kind of filter are you running on the tank behind me jordan yates um great question you know we had a tornado total of our house about a year and a half two years ago and we had a bunch of filters underneath it well the, the tank didn't get destroyed and uh this time when we rebuilt the house we put it's just a pool filter a sand filter outside there's no noise it's it's I, actually i can sit here in front of the tank it's kind of just one of my favorite places and uh so it's just a pool filter. It's no big deal. You just backwash it outside and pretty cool. Uh, <clears throat> Ralph James, ever fish Lake Murray around Ardmore, Oklahoma? Yes, sir, Ralph, I have. Only when I had to. No, I, it's, I, I kid. That's a, that's a tough lake. Um, full of smallmouth. I don't know why those fish don't get very big. Well, I do. I feel like that lake's not very fertile. It just you know, you, you have a lake like Grand and, and how it keeps producing fish. And when you're over there, there's shad wall to wall everywhere on Grand. You know, it's just a fertile lake, lots of food for those fish and it's dirtier water. When you go to Murray, it's like it's pristine, clear, clean water that's just not fertile. There's not a lot of plankton in that water for those uh, shad to thrive. Thus, I don't feel like there's a lot of a big population of big fish in that lake. There's lots of fish in that lake. Uh, there's just not a lot of food for them, but uh, it's a neat lake. I think it's a great lake for a person to become a better angler. You know, Jeff Crete's from that area, and I would hate to compete against him, and it just it made him better everywhere he goes uh, just because it's such a tough lake to compete on. You know, you can catch them out deep. You can catch them shallow. Um, it's a neat lake, but I think those fish on that lake, Ralph, get a lot deeper than, than I ever fished for them, and I think a lot of people ever fish for them. I think there's some fish out there ultra deep, 30, 40. 30 or 40 feet. So great question though. Hello, Jared K. I see you. I see you. Colby B. We have a 15 acre private lake. If you'd be interested in making a cool video, I sure appreciate the invitation, man. Thanks so much, Colby B. Um, so Connor B. Um, asking about what, what do I do with my boats after I sell them? Man, I, I, after I use one, I sell them. Um, a, Great friend of mine, Doug Owens, is buying one. Another friend of mine, Doug Loader, he's bought two or three over the years. Uh, I just, I've got guys that I've known for the last 15 years that, that man, I make them a great deal on it and uh, they're happy with them. So I just always sell my boats at the end of the year. That's a great question, Christopher. What colleges would you think would be uh, good for fishing uh, the Bassmaster College Series? I'm looking at Auburn at the moment. Man, Auburn would be a great one. You know, Christopher, I think. 
it's more more about where you're going to fit in, um, you know, and, and maybe let's say a place you could learn. Let's say let's I, I'm just throwing a scenario out there. Let's say you're a northern Alabama guy, Christopher, and you feel like, you know, that Tennessee Valley, maybe go to a college that's got Highland Reservoirs around it to take your game somewhere else or go to a, a lake that's got lowland reservoirs. I don't know. Go somewhere where you can change it up a little bit, get better on, on your craft. Don't go somewhere you're comfortable. And where you fit in, just buddies and people and grades. Don't forget about grades. All right, let's keep going. Linda Sullivan, can I go fishing with you? I appreciate the offer. Uh, how, do I, how do I fish a small steep wall reservoir that's got dirty water? That sounds tough, Hayden. How do I fish a small steep walled reservoir? So it's a reservoir. It's not a rock quarry. It sounds like a rock quarry, but it's got dirty water, man, shallow. Um, you know, if it's super dirty water, fish are going to be shallow, um, four or five feet at the deepest. Uh, just always keep that in mind. Um, you know, a lot of times in, in, in a dirty reservoir, the cleaner the water I can find, the more opportune times I'm going to have to get a bite. So uh, find your cleanest, most protected water. Um, that's all you can do, man. Square bill, spinner bait, buzz bait. I mean, those things are just hand in hand with that dirty water, shallow water. Uh, you know, don't make it too complicated. Hey, Shannon Whitehead, favorite Northern California lake, man. I, you know, I, I'm, 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 I regret saying that I've only got to fish two of your lakes out there. I've got to fish, you know, the California Delta, which is phenomenal. Uh, it was, you know, especially the first few times I went there. I think it's, you know, I'm, I'm sure it's still good. I don't think it's as good as it once was with all the water going south. But how could I ever argue against Clear Lake? I mean, Clear Lake is phenomenal. I mean, I just beautiful one of the most beautiful lakes like for everybody that's on here tonight that doesn't know about clear lake like we would we would be there in april and you would see a, a clouds go through the mountains up top and then there'd be snow on top of the mountains but yet you'd be sight fishing down here in the lake it's just a cool pretty area really really neat area without a doubt clear lake um let's see Man, Jerry, you've asked this question a couple times, buddy, and uh, I just got to tell you, I've never, I don't have any knowledge of a hum, hum, hummingbird 360. So for me, it's always going to be forward-facing sonar. Um, I'm really happy with it. Um, I think the majority, everybody would agree with me on that. Um, I think there's a time and place for both, but uh, I think you can do more. I, you know, I mean, that's me saying that, so I shouldn't say that. So I just, I'm comfortable with forward-facing sonar. I don't, I don't have 360. I don't. I've never had it. So that's my answer, bud. Sorry, I couldn't be more, more help there. Uh, how would you fish a deep, rocky highland reservoir in the fall? Jessica Eaton, deep highland, rocky reservoir in the fall. Um, you know, for me, I'm going to find um, shallow flats in the backs of creeks. Try to find some off-colored water. Run up some of those pockets, you know, as far as you can. Um, think about the wind, what direction those, that wind's been blowing for days, you know, that, you know, weeks, a predominant wind a lot of time. Um, and, and, and then think about transition, transition banks, you know, where it goes from that ledge rock to that pea gravel that they start relating to a lot of that stuff. But, um, that's the time of year. These fish will get shallower than any time of the year. Um, uh, and they're going to be aggressive. They're going to be feeding on shad and you just got to cover a lot of water on those types of bodies of water. Um, you know, and if you get the right day, a cloudy, windy, rainy day, you know, then you can stick to that clear water, you know, start, you know, throwing top waters, maybe burning a spinner bait, burning a small swim bait or something like that. But that's how I would approach it. I definitely disagrees with you on that. Yeah, he probably does. He probably does. And he had a great year. <laughs> yeah. When are you and Ott going out to take that jet boat again? I don't know. Not soon enough. I'd love to, Daniel. That'd be a fun time. Yep, I did make the Fluke Master wear an OU Sooners at. We had a little competition. Uh, Gene Jensen, a, a great – to guys, to be honest with you, he's like the original YouTuber. Like, he's been doing it for 10 or 15 years. He came to the house. We had a friendly bet. Uh, the loser had to wear the other's hat. And you know, we all know Gene wears Georgia everywhere. And uh, he, he ended up having to wear an OU hat, which is pretty cool. All right. When do smallmouth head back out deep after they've been shallow? Um, here's 
my thinking on that, guys. And this goes this goes for anywhere. Um, there's always fish deep, and there's always fish shallow. Um, not, I mean, I, I just I don't think it's like this big migration to that. I, I really don't. They're, they they do move some, um, and then you know when I just I, I don't believe that. I, I believe there's always some fish shallow. They become more active at certain times of the year, and less active or harder to catch or easier to catch, whatever you want to say. Uh, but up north, those fish, you know, I, I just know I've still caught fish in really cold water, shallow. So I just don't think they all move deep. I guess that's why I say that. So, all right, let's see. We got, what's my favorite flipping bait? Um, just something compact. I like that pit boss. Um, you know, in reality, guys, just have something you got confidence in. I'm, I'm going to have a black and blue one tied on for my dirty water, cloudy days. I'm going to have a green pumpkin tied on for uh, my clearer water. Um, you know, you're really imitating a crawdad or a bluegill most of the time. And, and you know, it's more about if it holds the hook well, if it, if it penetrates through there well, um, yet I don't get snagged. I want it to have a little bit of action, yet I want it to fall fast. And I just, I really like that Berkeley pit boss. It just, it's a good bait. Uh, <laughs> I'm laughing out loud. Alex Rudd's on here. We talked about him earlier. Have you ever been to a goat roping? He, he, uh, he definitely had some goat roping going on out here in Oklahoma when he was here. Uh, best lure this time of year after 10 to 15 mile an hour winds Af after like, man, I, Chris, I, I'm going to be throwing a spinnerbait during those winds. I just always think that that the wind is your friend. And, man, I, I spinnerbait, crankbait, you know, you can't go wrong this time of year for those things. Um, I love the question. Drew Stunts, I like the name. Uh, and as a kayak tournament fisherman, one verse one, huh? Um, I, you know, I, I did think about that. If, if, if there's some kayak tournaments in Oklahoma, heck yeah, I, I like to compete. I don't care if it's in a Wednesday night jackpot out here on Ulaga or Claremore Lake or in a kayak or a bass boat. I, I think it would be fun. I thought about it a bunch, you know, fishing in that because it would change my strategy uh, fishing, you know, because you can't cover the whole lake. You can't carry all the tackle you want to carry. So I'd like it. I'd like the challenge, to be honest with you. I would. I think it'd be a lot of fun. Okay, great question. Justin Warren, um, fishing used water as a co-angler. Um, you, you got to analyze, Justin, where you're at. So if you're on a lake, let's say like Rayburn, Toledo Bend, Gunnersville, Chickamauga, you know, you could probably throw Grand into that. Uh, if you're on a lake, a hammer lake, you don't have to do a lot of things different. You know, if you're on a, a, a lipless crankbait bite, you know, over grass, be throwing that lipless crankbait, but maybe a little bit different size line or um, a little bit different color. You know, then if you get to a lake like, let's say, um, oh, just throwing one out there. I, I, I was about to say beaver just because it's kind of a tough fishing lake or um, just a tough fishing lake. Let's just say a tough fishing lake or you're on grand and it gets really tough on grand. And you got a guy up front and he's throwing a big football jig or throwing a big Carolina rig. Well, that's when you're going to pull out something different, a shaky head. You know, if you're not getting a lot of bites, I guess the, the proper way to answer that is if you're on a lake that's got a lot of fish, don't deviate from the game plan. Whatever that guy in the front's doing, because um, you can finesse your way out of catching them, too. Uh, there are times that then that finesse tactics behind him will definitely outweigh and get you more bites. You have to analyze what kind of lake you're on, how many fish you're fishing for, um, and then make those decisions. But a great, great question. Yeah, Jim, man, that chopo is a great bait. It is. Uh, Jay Priest, have you ever had a chance to visit the new Headwaters Lake? No. Who was I talking to yesterday about it? Uh, I was with Roland over the weekend, and he's going down there all the time fishing the Headwaters. I, I want to bad, super, super bad. Uh, for you guys who don't know, they've built this whole new lake down in Florida, and it's super deep, like 40 feet to 10-foot ledges down to 40 feet again. They built it strictly for monster bass, and uh, um, it's like they're catching giants everywhere in it. It's, it's a place I'd love to go. Um, I'm trying, guys. They're going so fast. I'm trying to read them. 
What types of lakes present the biggest challenge for you and why? Highland Reservoir, Lowland Reservoir, Shallow Natural Lakes, without a shadow of a doubt. My Crophodus. Man, I love you, buddy. I know exactly who that is. Um, what do, can I just – I I better not give away your, your secret. Um, without a shadow of a doubt, for me, it would be those shallow natural lakes. Um, Florida. I, I just – through my career – I struggle there because I was raised having contour lines to follow. Um, you know, anywhere in the Midwest, anywhere really other than Florida, you have contour lines that I feel like fish follow, or you have points, you have creek channel bends, you have rock changes, you have structure that you can see both with your eyeballs and structure that you can see with your Lorance. And when you go to Florida, you can't even find an outside grass line. For the most part, you feel like you get to the outside grass and it stops growing. Well, then you look out there 10 more feet and there's another patch of grass and out there 100 feet and another. So I can never find the outside grass line. Um, you can't even find an inside grass line because it goes for days and days and days that you can't even get to. So that was always my biggest struggle. Great, great, great question. And I uh, appreciate you asking that a bunch. All right. Uh, Sherlock, Sherlock home IRC. Uh, I'm in San Antonio. Wanted to know Texas lakes that have been great fishing for you, man, without a shadow of a doubt, Sherlock. Uh, I love Falcon. Uh, we spend a lot of time down there in the winter. Uh, my in-laws have a place down there. Uh, Choke Canyon. I've, I've had some memorable days on Choke Canyon. Um, Conroe is a, is one of my all time favorite Texas lakes. I just, in that area, I just, I love, love that. Like I've never been to OH Ivy. Um, I want to, uh, Rayburn and Toledo Bend are, are two of my all-time favorites. They've really kind of changed uh, over the last few years from what I used to fish there and how I fished it. I think they've evolved a little bit more, a lot more fish deep. That we, They've probably always been there. We just never fished for them out there with the new electronics. But there's no doubt some great, great lakes in that Texas area and especially around San Antonio. I was wishing that hurricane would have come through there the other day. Uh, didn't drop any rain, but anyway. Am I going to challenge the Fluke Master to a one-on-one, -on -one? Harold? Uh, we did a one-on-one -on -one video, and I think he's definitely going to want to do another one and redeem himself. So, yes, uh, I'll probably travel to his part of the country. I, you know, I actually think it's going to be his kayak versus my bass boat one-on-one. -on -one. So that'll be a lot of fun. Um, where are we at? Oh, thank you for the nice comment, Marty. Uh <laughs> so, Jody's offering hundred dollars for my Grand Lake waypoints. I don't think they'd help you any. It's it's more about figuring out a pattern, guys, and, and just running it. Difference between using a square bill crankbait and a regular small bill crankbait. Great question, uh, Rick. Um, you know, for me, a square bill crankbait is all about deflecting off cover. It's one that I'm reeling quick. Um, when I go to something like a frit side or a flat sided crankbait. I may still reel those quick, but I'm not necessarily trying to deflect them off something. I'm not grinding rocks. I'm not grinding down, uh, you know, the sides of docks, trying to deflect it off each corner. Um, you know, to put it in a nutshell, that square bill is uh, a wider wobble, a more active fish, a warmer water fish. When when I go to another build crankbait, uh, same size, it's generally for colder water. So, um, yeah, that, that's exactly how I'd have to answer that or a pressured situation. I got somebody from Oglesby, guys, from people around on this YouTube that do not know Oglesby, Oglesby is like right up the Caney River for me. And uh, there's a lot of pecan trees there, too. Hey, Jim, man, great question. What name have you decided for your your? Uh, a kayak man I, I got a bunch of them right here like you guys sent me some great ones i gotta find that right here i got them all right here i kind of wrote them all down um i really like mini exl i think z133 um t and bassin sent that in uh what i thought another Tuesday, you want me to name it after my wife, Z21XS, extra small. How about ZTRO, um, Mini EZ? I've had a lot of Mini EZs. 
Z squared, uh, XL. I don't know. You guys sent in some really great ones. Mini Z again, Nitro Junior, uh, Mini E squared, Little Nitro, uh, Little Nitro Express. Um, I, I haven't, I, I don't know. It's, it's, I, I kind of like that Mini Z or Mini, uh, one of those Mini K21, Nitro K. You guys sent in some good ones though. Um, I appreciate you a bunch. And if you guys, I got to get a name for it because Cade, why I'm doing that, Cade named his the Dauntless. So we got him this sticker that goes down the side of it. Uh, has to do with, uh, oh, what's that movie? Pirates of the Caribbean. He's a big guy, Pirates of the Caribbean. So he's putting his as, as the Dauntless. But great question. All right, Sean Lay, he's got this, uh, he's got a highlight. What is the lure for Fall Up North? At some point, everyone goes finesse, but what are some reaction-type lures that will work? Um, man, a spinnerbait, Sean. I mean, I, I just – I'm going to throw a spinnerbait, maybe make it a compact spinnerbait if it's super clear. Um, burning a, a swim bait at, at times is really good, um, or slow rolling a spin, swim bait. Um, a square bill crankbait is really good. Um, you know, those fish will bite that stuff all the way until that water's, you know, gets – in the fifties. So, you know, for me, that's how I would target it because it's easier for me to find those fish to fish them shallow fish, wind blown banks. Um, but yeah, that's what I would use. Man, cane fishing is asking about Piercy Priest Lake and I've never been there, buddy. I'm so sorry. And he, the free hat to help wounded vets, man, I'm all about that. So absolutely. Please, please. Chris G, I've talked about that question earlier tonight, but uh, I've got my fingers crossed. I'm still working on it, working on it hard. Um, my favorite flipping rod. I use a 7.6 heavy action rod. Uh, it's the Bass Pro Platinum rod. I, I, I use, I've i used it for the last three or four years. Prior to that, I had a carbon light rod I used, a 7.6 heavy action, though. Um, you know, and I'm using that with 25-pound fluorocarbon. Now, if I'm going to go flip braid, um, then I can back off that rod a little bit, and I will use a 7.3 heavy action carbon light rod because the braid has no stretch, a um, little bit lighter rod. You know, I use that when I'm flipping, you know, a big jig out in open grass type situations. It just, it's a lot quicker, faster, uh, more efficient, and doesn't hurt your elbows near as bad. Julio, great question. I got three set up. Should I invest in more rods and reels or electronics? Um, Julio, or Juliana, Juliana, I'm not saying it right. I'm just not even going to pretend um, I know that name. But um, I, I would say get you some electronics because you're always going to be out there wondering, you know, what's beneath me? How, what's, what's over here? What's over there? You got three rod and reels. That's all you need. Um, you know, anything that passed, that's a luxury because you just don't, you don't have to sit down and retie. Get you some electronics without a doubt. Yes, Drake. Great. War Eagle spinnerbaits are very, very good spinnerbaits. What color crankbait do you recommend this year? Man, that's kind of has to do with the water color. You know, I, if, if, if the water's stained, you know, um, it's going to be a shad color crankbait. They're feeding on shad a lot, but then there's times that I want a chartreuse black back. Um, and then if the water's really clear, I want more of a transparent uh, um, crankbait, but you know, generally you cannot go wrong with a shad color crankbait this time of year. Glad you're back, Mark. Um, Ned Rig Rod and Reel William Sykes. I use a 7 1 medium action spinning rod. Um, I've got that with like 10 or 12 pound braid with a leader, uh, you know, six and eight pound leader. Um, that 7 1 seems to be perfect for me. Great question. Tomorrow is a good day for fishing according to the solar tables. My choice tomorrow is Lake Harris or Lake Door. How about your choice? Oh, I wish I was going tomorrow. I'm, I'm trying to get stuff ready for uh, uh, pecans and all that kind of stuff. And I got to do some filming around here at the house. We're going to try to get out. Uh, I got to do some brainstorming, figure out top three baits video for no November. Uh, need to try to work on where to start. You guys sent, have been sending in a lot of great questions on that where to start videos on and breaking lakes down. And that takes me quite a while to do that. So I'm going to work on that stuff tomorrow. Um, let's see. we got some more questions. 
Love to see a Lake Conroe breakdown. That would be cool. Man, I, 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 I Bobby, it would, but I just, I love that lake so much. And I, I hope, and I got my fingers crossed that we go back to it sometimes. So I hate giving up too much stuff on that lake, but, um, I did it once. I did a breakdown on, on, on Conroe one time. I'd have to go back and see what month it was, but I did do a breakdown on it. You have to go check that out. Best finesse technique on grand Andrew. Um, it had to be a shaky head year round. Shaky head catches a lot of fish on grand. It just does. It, there's no question about it. Do you believe in the fisherman's almanac? No, Jody, I don't. I, I don't. I'm sorry. I'm going to go when I go. What's your line size on the two five square bill this time of year? Um, my line size on that, on that size square bill. He's asking what my line size in on a bigger square bill. Joe is, and, uh, you know, it's 17 or 20 pound test. It's a big line because I don't need that bait to get deep. A lot of times, you know, if I'm trying to get it deep, then I will back it down a little bit. There are times I will throw a square bill, let's say on eight to 10 foot brush piles and the brush piles, you know, say seven feet underneath the water, then I'll downsize that line. So I can really get it through that brush, just the top of it. But, uh, most time it's on 17 or 20 pound test, but great, great question. Um, yeah, <laughs> uh, Miss Marnie um, and Anitha, Anitha Marnie. No, they are going to be ready Monday. I'm going to start harvesting Monday. I think they'll be ready by then. I was going to try to work on the pecans this week, but I didn't get it done, and they're not quite ready. Um, Nathan Elliott, the thought on Wiley X sunglasses, man, I, I believe in them wholeheartedly, um, and the reason is because they protect your eyes. They're they're ANSI rated, and what that means is. Um, they're safety glasses on top of being fishing glasses. Um, you know, it's unfortunate. We had a cameraman five, six years ago, got a bullet weight from another angler, came back, hit his glasses, and he had a glass frame. It wasn't a Wiley X. And, I mean, he spent, like, a lot of time in the hospital. If they'd been Wiley Xs, it wouldn't have happened. You know, you go to their website, and you see they've shot it with guns. They do all kinds of stuff. It's a polycarbonate lens, so it'll protect your eyes. So just that piece of it alone is – justifiable for me to wear those glasses you know year round so um i love them all right let's see let's see all that i agree a great question Stuart weaver uh they he'd like to see the pro anglers from oklahoma try to promote a lunker program like texas has that's great 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 that thought have I ever fished McGee Creek in Oklahoma? Yes, I have. It's been a long time, but man, it, I had some awesome fishing down there when I did. Uh, yeah, Linda, I did put up a couple big deer stands over this uh, last few days. Um, man, I got some friends coming out, going to go deer hunting. Uh, eventually, I'm going to uh, give a trip away, maybe a bass and buck type trip down the line. So uh, trying to set it up for some of that stuff. So um, I, I'm pretty proud of him. And me and Cater and him have a lot of fun in him. I got to I gotta have something contained to keep him quiet in there. Um, Clint Jacob. Hey, E, local Oki angler here seeing Shad and Coves. Can't seem to connect with bass. Is it, the, is it the bait or the location? It could be both. Uh, if you're seeing a lot of, of, of shad in the backs of the pockets, unless it's super cold, you know, especially in the afternoons, those fish will be blowing up on them. Um, and it's just, those are the trickiest fish to catch, in my opinion. It seems like I had a social media question on this also. Um, when you got that much bait, you know, why, why, are, why, is it, why are the fish hard to catch in October? Well, because you've got lots of bait prevalent. It's up in the water column. Fish are suspended. The bait's suspended. Um, so you got to think about all those things when you're in those situations. And, uh, um, it's a time of year. I make multiple, multiple casts on a piece of cover. Like if you have a log and there's shad everywhere and you know, there's a bass on that log, make 10, 12, 15 casts on that log. And, uh, you know, you generally, you can aggravate them into biting. Um, How do you determine the size of the crankbait to use? Man, Tony, great question. Um, you know, if you're in doubt, just go with a 1.5, you know, the, the normal size. You know, for me, it's a Berkeley Square Bill 5.5. Um, you know, I think they do it in millimeters where other people did it in inches, whatever. Um, you know, that's just a normal shad size. Now, there are times if the water is a little cleaner, if there's a lot of pressure on your lake, I will go down to a smaller size or I will go up to a bigger size. I just, I've done it 
this is the time of year you have to experiment. You know, if you've got big fish and lots of pressure, I've seen times where that biggest square bill crankbait reeled as fast as you can will unleash the biggest fish ever. It's just like you can go down through there and show them something like that. And you're like in awe of it. Um, it's happened at Conroe for me multiple times. But then the same thing, like had a cup event a couple years ago down in Texas and I was catching them really good on those small little square bill crankbait. So, um, you know, it's just something you got to experiment with, but generally if in doubt, just start with the regular one. Man, uh, Billy Knowles, what was the best change you made in a tournament that you feel was the deciding factor that made you win? Best change. Wow. What a question. That's a, that's a, that's a, I mean, it'd take me some time to think about that. Um, you know, so many of the times it, it's, you know, making decisions, you know, that third or fourth and final day, you know, um, kind of by the seat of your pants, you know, I'm sitting here just thinking through all the different scenarios and, 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 and what I did to, you know, to, to, to win those events, you know, some of the times it's the winds blowing so hard. I think of, of like a Lake Erie win lawyer, it was horrible, like, like horrible, horrible. And, and, but yet I still win. It took me two and a half hours. So that was a good decision to go ahead and, and no matter how hard the wind's blowing or no matter how far away your fish are, don't back out of not going, you know, I, I, I it's always going to be in your head the rest of the day. Uh, you know, but as far as maybe changing up a technique, you know, I, I can think back just something that popped in my head. Um, one of the first tournaments I ever won was on Lake Fall, Alabama, and I'd been catching them on a buzz bait. And uh, the last day they wouldn't eat that buzz bait. I switched over to a, 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 a like a wake bait. It was a sub ward at the time. And, uh, you know, I just recognized it right off the bat that morning. And, man, they started eating that, and I won the tournament. So um, just kind of let those fish tell you what to do. But that's a great question, and that's probably a good topic for another day's discussion on here. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Small Mouth Addiction. I appreciate it a bunch, Steve. Thanks so much for the kind comments. Well, of dinks on McGee Creek last Tuesday, topwater caught. Man, that sounds like a fun day, Ralph. I appreciate the information. Great question right there. Um, Lyle Fishing, a big fan from Canada. You know, does, does any of the tournament organizations consider coming to somewhere, you know, in Canada? Lake of the Woods, Rainy Lake. Uh, for smallmouth, I, I would love to, I, I, but I feel like some of that stuff still in the United States. Um, I, I think some of that's lodging on some of that stuff. Um, it, it would be easy to do in a cup event maybe because there's so many less people involved in a cup event, but um, there also needs to be a little bit of a chamber, chamber of commerce behind it, even to reach out to the organizations. Hey, come up here, uh, you know, you know, bring your organization up here. So I'd love to though. I, I, I would, I'm always, wanting to go someplace i've never been chris my go-to bait this time of year chris great question you know square bill crankbait's hard to beat spinner baits like i will always have one tied on um uh, and some form of a top water would be the three baits that you know i know you're asking for one but i gave you three Paul B, best gear ratio for uh, diving crankbaits, without a doubt, um, something a little bit slower. I, I like a lot of eight three to ones on any of my bottom baits, uh, any of my top water baits. But then when I'm start winding something like a spinner bait, a crankbait, a uh, vibrating jig, you know, in in normal water temperatures, I use that six point eight to one, which is a fairly quick reel, but yet slower than the eight three to one. Now when it gets cold. Um, I still have a bunch of pro qualifier five to one gear ratios. I even have some that are 4.3 to one just to make myself slow it down that much more. There's a time in the spring when those you've had all that warm weather, you know, for a week or two and your blood's pumping, but yet that bass's blood's not pumping. That water really hadn't warmed up. And, and that's when I really bring those slow gear ratio reels out. It can be a difference maker for me. If I was fishing up north, where would you fish? Deeper shallow, without a doubt. I, I'm always going to start shallow. Um, I just would. I, I, I just think you can find them that much quicker. 
Uh, Everett Sheets, I, you know, I don't know. I, I'm going to have to look at that schedule, and if there's something around the house, yes, I'd love to. Just asking me about fishing a kayak tournament, but great, great question. Um, uh, JD Pram 99 I'm going to do some crappie fishing. Uh, it's hard not to, you know, living right here on Nulagal Lake, but I do have a lot of hunting on my mind, but, you know, there's it's a lot of fun going crappie fishing. Cade likes it, so... Um, Cane fishing, the biggest influence in your life that led you to the fishing career? Uh, man, what a question. There's a string of people. You know, my mom and dad, they didn't really fish, so I had to put them in there because they supported it. Uh, there's a, a, a guy by the name of Gary Powell that invented a one-man uh, kick boat that he used with swim fins, and, and my dad made styrofoam packaging. And uh, he came to my dad, asked me to make this boat. It was called a water wagon back in the day. Then it, then it changed to a fishing pal. It's from the Amarillo, Texas area. And, you know, I fished a lot with him. I learned a lot from him. Uh, just a neat individual. I had some football coaches in Texas, Pete Hart, that I fished a bunch with. Um, and then Sam Roseski up at, at, at Bedford Sales, you know, he, he really helped prepare, you know, propel my career. I uh, worked for him there when I lived in Illinois. So, um, there's a lot of people that really influenced or really helped me get down this path and, and I'm forgetting a bunch more. Trust me. Uh, the list goes on and on, but those are some of the early ones. All right, Wyatt, I will hit you up, buddy. Glad you're on here. Yes, I have fished old Hickory Lake. We had a, um, a BASS event there a long time ago and it seems like, who won that event? Um, the jockey, Kevin Worth. He was running like 70 miles up that river, caught him on a 10-inch worm, and and seems like a, a crankbait or something in the backs of pockets way up Old Hickory. Uh, I was running down towards the dam, fishing some offshore cover, uh, some deeper water, catching a few, but I didn't do that good in it. But um, Robbie asking anywhere I've ever fished that I that I'm but I asking is there anywhere I have not fished that I'm wanting to? There's all kinds of places I want to. I mean, Rainy Lake, Lake of the Woods just got mentioned. Um, uh, I'd love to go to some of those Mexico lakes. Um, yeah, there's all kinds of places I could go on and on and on and on. Um, I've never been fishing Lake Superior. I'd like to go fish that Lake Superior. You know, there's an area up there that's got smallmouth. There's all kinds of places. Thank you for the kind comments, Cody. Thank you, Jody. Um, seeing what time it was. Boehner Marsh. No, I never did, Jim. Never even heard of it. Thank you, Crawford. Thank you, Cameron. Glad to see this past week in the U.S. Open Grand. It was tough fishing for us. We had a blast. Can't wait to do it again. That was an awesome tournament. Tyler Strader's bringing up uh, the U.S. Open on Grand this past weekend. And what was so awesome about it was, one, all the entry fees went to conservation and directly to affect bass fishing conservation, which is really, really cool, from all the events all year long, which I think is awesome. Uh, the next best thing about it was it was for amateurs only. I, I don't remember, don't quote me on this, but you could have only won so much money in your lifetime of bass fishing. So all the local hammers at Grand, none of them could fish it. My brother-in-law, my father-in-law couldn't fish it. The other cool thing about it was there was divisions for like women and, you know, two women partners or a father and a daughter, a father and a son, a grandpa. Like they had all this money given away for just those divisions. So they were really promoting the family function of it. And then uh, on top of it, the top 40 guys, the top 40 teams, they get to go to Table Rock with a chance to win one million dollars in an amateur event. It just it's super cool. Um, and it was 50,000 cash they gave away and 25,000 cash. It wasn't boats, you know, so quite a, a heck of a heck of a tournament and a lot of money went to conservation and a lot of families were out there. It was cool. I mean, there's boats out there. I saw a 1994 bass tracker with a 
maybe a 30 horse on it. There was a pontoon boat out there fishing it. I mean, there was all walks of life. It wasn't, it, 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 it did what it was supposed to do. It was supposed to get people out fishing, you know, tons of people I talked to that night. It was their very first tournament that they ever fished. So I, any of you guys out there that's new to fishing, try it next year. I mean, if you want to ever put your feet over into a tournament fishing, it'd be a great circuit to go try. Uh, I am trying to read fast. How long will you fish out without a bite before moving deep in the fall? Corey Gray. Um, it's all about water temperature, Corey, and water color. In the state of Oklahoma, where I live, there's going to be fish shallow all year long. I mean, it just they there will be something up there. They don't eat every day, but uh, you know, then if that water's cleaner, then you can find more active fish out deeper. Um, I fully believe there's always fish shallow and there's always fish deep, unless it's the spawn. Then they're all up shallow. A good lure for standing timber. Um, Man, Daniel, there's all kinds of stuff. You know, have you just, it just depends on watercolor, water clarity. Um, uh, you know, just off the top of my head, spinnerbait, crankbait, whatever you can get through there uh, would work, work good. <laughs> I'd love that. Kevin Thornton, a, a seniors only bass tournament trail. Man, that, that'd be a great thing to do here. In a, when I get to be 15 years older, we need to start one up. So we have a place to go fishing, Kevin. That'd be cool. When am I going to make another video with my in-laws? Probably soon, you know. Uh, it's about time to go back down to Falcon, you know, get my father-in-law back in the boat. Thank you, Kane, for the kind comments. Yes, Chris, I have fished that lake. I can't say it, Nack, Nack, uh, I, but it's uh, we had a, a, a Major League Fishing World Championship down there on that lake, and uh, I forgot who won it. It wasn't me, but neat, neat lake, super cool lake in Texas. Well, uh, James, I'm not sure where your lake's at. Renegade tournament this weekend on my home lake, so it's hard for me to say. Do you prefer deep or shallow fishing? I just prefer catching them. I, I'm not. I don't. I don't care if they're deep or shallow. I just like catching them. <laughs> Cody, have I ever fished Texoma very much, buddy? I, that's where I cut my teeth. Like I've won five or six boats on that lake. That's where I went to college. So I, I fished that lake a lot. Um, I always targeted largemouth. Uh, the smallmouth were a bonus. I could never count on them for multiple days in an event. But uh, yes, sir, I fished that lake a lot. What's my strategy for fishing heavily pressured lake? Jimmy Brown. Um, you got to run from that crowd at times. You've got to reel your bait faster at times. You got to make your bait sink faster. At times, you've got to make those fish react. You got to make multiple casts. Um, you got to put your bait where other people aren't putting it. I mean, there's just a whole list of things that, like, if I'm going into a tournament that that I know I'm behind boats all day long, and I, I just got to do something different. We say it a lot on my YouTube channel, thinking outside the box, and and that's especially the case when you're on a pressured lake. All right. It's number one lure for stained water in the 70s for fall fishing. Um, stained water, man, number one. Well, the number one for me would be like a buzz bait, you know? I mean, just because I love seeing that bite, you know, or a jaywalker. Uh, you know, then you'd have a lipless crankbait in there. You'd have a spinnerbait in there. You had that vibrating jig, you know, just pick your poison, but they all work good this time of year. Drake, absolutely. Drop shot's going to be important up north. Um, yes, sir. Man, guys, I'm going to close this thing down. We are at 8 o'clock. I cannot thank you guys enough. Yes, Drake, I like crappie fishing. I'm getting all kinds of questions, and I've tried to get around them. Favorite technique around cypress trees, square bill crankbait, or flipping a jig? Would I use a 7.6 medium for a marabou jig? It might be tough to cast it on that long of a rod. But, uh, man, guys, I appreciate you guys following along a bunch. Um, we've got another cool YouTube video coming out Tuesday, and some of these questions kind of pertain to it. It's a bait that I have tied on this fall a bunch in those pressured situations, in those situations where you can't get a bass to bite your bait. 
Um, we got a video coming out Tuesday, kind of addressing some of that a little bit. Uh, so you guys tune in Tuesday for the next Project D. Man, I cannot thank you guys enough for all the support, all the thumbs up, all the uh, likes on the channel. Um, I'm having a lot of fun doing it. I'm having a lot of fun interacting with you guys. Uh, trying really hard to get back to all the questions, you know, when you guys put them on there. So be patient with me. I will get better at it. It's just a, a full plate. Um, we got to get some pecans harvested next week too. So until then, guys, though, I appreciate it a bunch, and we will see you again. Thanks a bunch, guys. Y'all have a great evening.